I am Robert Whitaker. I'm a veterinary imaging technologist and a regional business development manager for Epica International or Epica Animal Health. We have two different types of Vimigo systems that are out there. The first one is the classic Vimigo HU. This system has been in production since 2014. And then the smaller Vimigo Pico, which has been in production since last year in 2018. The only difference between these two machines is the table. Uh, the classic Vimigo, the gantry rolls over the table, and in the new Pico, the table indexes into the gantry, uh, and the table will break apart from the gantry, which allows it to fit in some smaller spaces than uh, usual. If you want to learn more about that Vimigo, go to epicaanimalhealth.com and give us a holler over there. Give us a shout. There's a place for you to enter your information if you're interested. Uh, you can always call me directly or send me an email as well, and I'm glad to help you get more information on this system. Today we're going to talk about the arthrogram. An arthrogram is a contrast-enhanced imaging procedure that we're doing on stifles of dogs. This is also done in other joint spaces, but the most common use in veterinary is going to be on dog stifles. This allows us to appreciate soft tissue anatomy inside of the joint space. So if we look at our sample of a canine joint here, uh, we can see all of those soft tissue ligaments and, of course, the meniscus and even the cartilage, which really isn't on uh, this diagram, we cannot appreciate that just in a regular image without contrast enhancement. So we're going to use an injectable contrast. There are several different types that are out there. Iohexol is the one that we use most commonly. The 300 concentration is also the one that we think is most cost effective. Uh, we don't have to deliver near as much, but we are going to dilute that down just a little bit. Uh, one to ten parts of saline, so one part on the peg, ten parts saline. We're going to use a 22 gauge needle and we're going to, of course, sterile prep the access site where we're going to do the injection. Some folks may want to go ahead and do a pre-contrast scan and then do a post-contrast scan but ultimately, we're going to look at both of the stifles. That's what we want to do. We always want to be able to see them both. We're going to inject into the joint space. Now, some people use an ultrasound to guide their needle. Uh, others do not. Others may turn on the fluoro. Okay, Vimigo systems have a fluoroscopy mode that you can use to uh, guide your needle into the joint space. And there are some who are good enough to do it blind. We're going to inject at a rate of 0.5 mils per second. Um, we're waiting for palpable distension, but we have to be really careful that we don't overload the joint with too much contrast. That can be problematic because then the contrast leaks out of the joint space and pretty soon we have a lot of contrast, more contrast in the image than was needed. So normally the rule of thumb that I'm using, if I'm under, let's say, 25 pounds with a dog, Normally, it's going to take maybe two mils uh, at max, and we get in the real small breeds like uh, Chihuahuas, we're probably going to be at one uh, mil max, maybe one and a half. And then, of course, when we get in our really big dogs, we may go up to five or six mils uh, on an animal that's over 100 pounds. So be very conscious of uh, how much contrast that you're injecting into that joint space. We just don't want too much. After we finish the injection, we're going to flex and extend that joint for up to two minutes. Normally, I can see where about 30 seconds of this is uh, satisfactory, but if you want to go a little longer, that's fine. Um, we don't have to wait at that point. We go ahead and do our scan and obtain the images that we want to see. Uh, Position-wise, this is what the animal is going to look like inside the gantry. We're going to have both knees as close together as we can get them. And then, of course, once we complete our scan, our screen's going to look like this, where we've got both knees in view. And the images that we're going to see are going to reflect contrast material, which is going to be the, a, a really bright white. And then darker inside the joint space uh, in here is going to indicate our soft tissue anatomy. So through here, 
we look at our map or of anatomy to the left, we can see in the image here on the right that we can identify uh, our intact cruciates in the center of the image. And we can also look from a lateral perspective, and we'll go through this case here in just a minute uh, from a lateral perspective, because we can get all three uh, planes uh, on the screen at once. It's called multi-planar uh, reconstruction view. But we can also see our meniscus, whether or not it's intact. And of course, we can also see from the side if our cranial cruciate or our caudal cruciate are torn, partially torn, or intact. I have opened my Horos DICOM viewer in my MacBook, and I'm going to show you some cases. This case here is of a patient that is about, uh, I believe he's 40 pounds, mixed breed canine. This blob that we're seeing here in the far right image, uh, in the uh, caudal aspect of the uh, stifle joint there, this blob of white is contrast material. This is what happens when we deliver too much contrast into the joint space. Now the good news is, in this particular animal, even though we over-delivered contrast and we got a little too much, uh, we still get some detail in the joint space that gives us information of what's going on with this animal. If I were to change anything uh, about the way this animal was positioned, I would want his legs in just a little more of a, of a maybe a 45 degree uh, bend. We don't, we don't really have that. Uh, in this image, but uh, we're going to work with what we've got. And of course, we sent this off to Peregrine Radiology to Dr. Bob O'Brien. Peregrine Radiology is a branch of Epica International, and they have seven radiologists that review cases that come from Vimigo clients all over the United States. They also review images for folks that do not have a Vimigo. If they just want to send ultrasound and x-ray, uh, those can get reviewed at Peregrine too. So if you want to check Peregrine radiology out uh, as a possible source for your teleradiology, you can go to their website at peregrinerad.com, peregrinerad.com, so go check them out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this case out and take you over to, we call this dog Hank, so we're going to take you over and, and show you Hank's report from Peregrine Radiology. Okay, so we're here with Hank's report. Hank is a 50-pound mixed-breed canine. He's six years old. And the referring veterinarian inserted some history here before they submitted the case. That's always very valuable, the more history that we can give. I mean, we're not talking about war and peace here. We need, you know, two or three lines of good history. And then we're going to let the radiologist read the images and give us um, his or her findings in the report that we get back. So our report is going to be heavily dependent on how well we provide history and also how well uh, the images are that we scanned. And if you remember in, in Hank's case here, uh, we, we did overload the joint just a little bit with too much contrast. So uh, we have some contrast in the image that's not supposed to be there. Uh, but the radiologist worked through it, and he was able to see some things in here. But he does a little bit of hedging at the end of the report, and, and that's probably the reason why. But here he um, – the good thing about Peregrine is they're always going to give you small images uh, that indicate what they see. Uh, so it's a learning experience as well as a uh, report, a medical report. So you get to learn a little bit when you read these reports because you get to see what they see in the images. Uh, so anytime that they comment on an anatomy, the photo of it's going to be right below it. Mild osteophyte formation on distal femur. So these right here um, are images of the distal femur. And then right stifle, both cruciate uh, ligaments appear intact. Mild degenerative joint disease. Contrasts on all aspects. Extravasation of contrast into the long digital tendon sheath and surrounding the long digital extensor muscle. That's a concern to them. And then it labels cradial cranial cruciate ligament here. We're going to see that here. If you can refer back to the beginning of the video, you'll see the anatomy map uh, that we've put up there. Caudal cruciate running down through here. And then, of course, medial and lateral meniscus are both on display here. And the long digital extensor that he speaks of is right through here. 
So um, there were hip images, but everything was normal, so they didn't see any significant, uh, you know, pathology in the hips to, you know, provide images for that. But uh, Dr. O'Brien does go on to say, cruciate ligaments appear intact and partial tear is still possible medial meniscal rupture. And um, so he's thinking there could be a rupture in the, in the uh, medial meniscus right here given that there's contrast material flowing through here. So that kind of wraps up what we've done with Hank here. Um, if we look at uh, another patient named Scout, he had the appropriate amount of um, contrast delivered into the joint space. History is a little shorter here, chronic lameness on the right hand leg progressively getting worse. Now they also only submitted images of that right hind leg. My recommendation is when we do arthrograms, we are going to do both knees. Sometimes we may only want to do contrast in the one that is lame, but I do recommend that we do contrast in both. That way we can get a good comparison. And it's also good to do a pre-contrast scan of those knees so that we know what they look like without the contrast enhancement. And then we deliver the contrast into both knees. If it takes us a while between knees, you know, to do contrast in one, do contrast in the other, no worries that contrast isn't gonna go away. It's not like an intravenous um, injection of contrast where you know we've, we're on the clocks against us and we have to scan the animal before it all ends up in the bladder. Uh, so here uh, we go down and we start looking at scouts images. Appears to be complete disruption of cranial cruciate ligament. So if you look down here of the cranial cruciate um, screenshot that he has on the, on the report, it looks like a fine mess in here. I mean, there's just contrast everywhere. Uh, we don't really see a definitive, uh, you know, cruciate hanging out anywhere. There's contrast just kind of all over inside the joint space. And then he also uh, comments, uh, contrast appears to fill a mildly distended space between lateral meniscus and the tibia. There are osteophytes on the proximal and distal aspects of patella, distal femur, and proximal tibia. Y'all can read too. I don't have to read all this. Moderate joint effusion thinning. So when we go down here and we start looking at the meniscus, you know, we can see what he's talking about here where, you know, there seemed to be uh, a little bit of a contrast, uh, you know, bridge in here that maybe he thought shouldn't exist. We get down a little further where there's a cyst-like lesion here that he indicates. So when we look at his conclusion, cranial cruciate ligament rupture, Degenerative joint disease, joint effusion, suspect tear in medial meniscus, possible loosening, and detachment of the lateral meniscus, and surgical stabilization clinically indicated. So this is a definitive, hey, you know, let's send this animal over to, uh, to surgery. And, uh, you know, some folks may have a mobile surgeon that comes in and do this. Others do it on their own. Um, you know, specialty clinics, of course, usually have board-certified surgeons on staff ready to go. But why, why are we going to do arthrograms? So let's, let's go ahead and address the big question here. Why do arthrograms? We know historically, over time, veterinarians have been looking at dog stifles, and when they get a drawer sign in the physical exam, they go, oh, that animal needs, you know, uh, surgical correction because, you know, definitely has, uh, you know, tears in the ligaments. That's always been good enough. Now, we like to recommend that we do arthrograms on anything that's got rear, rear hind leg lameness. Um, we want to be able to see what's going on in that joint space. And sometimes we're not talking about cruciate tears. We're not going to get a drawer sign. So maybe there's a meniscal tear. Maybe there's something else going on. When we do an arthrogram, we're going to see those things. And Maybe surgery isn't what is indicated to fix those things. Maybe we look at laser therapy on that joint instead of surgery. Maybe we try laser therapy first, come back later, rescan the patient again, see if we've made progress. If there's no progress made, maybe we refer the animal then to a surgeon or bring in our mobile surgeon, et cetera. That's why arthrograms are important. We want to give confidence to the treating veterinarian, and we want to be able to deliver that confidence through to the pet owner. The pet owner needs to know that not just because the doctor put his hands on my dog's leg and got a slip in the drawer sign, but also we saw it. And not only that, he sent me pictures of it. And not only that, the radiologist he sent those pictures to 
also saw that. So it gives them peace of mind that they really do need this surgery or they really do need this next procedure that's going to fix that uh, pathology. So it's all about confidence, it's all about delivering value, and it's all about delivering answers. Now when we look at what this costs, um, most people who have Vimigos are charging about $200 to $250 more than they're charging for x-rays. So it's not out of the league of many pet owners' budgets to go ahead and do um, the scan with the Vimigo. So this is a huge, huge tool that can be used in lameness, but we're also using it in many other things. Vimigo is great, and this is one case or one indication that we can use Vimigo for and if you like what you're seeing on my uh, YouTube video here today, like it, subscribe to it. We're going to be making more of them just like it. We're going to be talking about um, brain tumors and masses in the, in the brain in the future. We're going to be talking about dentistry. Um, we're going to be talking about chest mets or mets in the thorax or in the lung field. We're going to be talking about spines. I'm going to do one of these videos as often as I can and put them out there to evangelize what this technology, high definition volumetric imaging from Vimigo, what it's capable of doing and what the value is behind it and why it delivers such um, peace of mind and such um, confidence to the veterinarians and the pet owners who take their animals to those veterinarians. This is an amazing technology. Again, if you want to know more about that Vimigo system, you go to epicaanimalhealth.com. Epica is spelled E-P-I-C-A, epicaanimalhealth.com. If you need to know more about peregrine radiology, you can go to peregrinerad.com. Again, that's peregrinerad.com. Again, like us, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for being here and giving me your precious time to show you what arthrograms are all about today, and have a great one.